In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to get high quality depth map shadows in Viewport 2.0 if you have a sky dome in your environment. So this was a demo file I put together for the launch of Maya 2012, and a couple of people have asked me how I was getting the depth map shadows to actually work. So I'm going to walk you through that process. If we jump into our hardware textured mode and turn off the hardware lighting, you'll notice that the majority of the lighting information has actually been baked into the texture maps for this spaceport, except for where this character is walking around on top of the landing pad here. If we turn the hardware lighting back on, you can see that we've got a couple point lights as well as this directional light that are kind of matching the texture baked lighting that's been kind of captured over here on this back side. The only problem with this is obviously there's no shadows grounding that character onto the uh, landing pad. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and turn on the hardware shadows, and this is where you start to run into problems. We take this directional light and enable its depth map shadows. As soon as I do that, you can see that my scene got very dark over where this character and the spaceship are. And that's because when we turn on the depth map shadows for this directional light, obviously there's this big sky dome and it's casting shadows on those objects. So essentially we turned off the contribution of that light to this geometry. So obviously if we turn that depth map shadow back off, the light starts to hit this, the character in the spaceship. So what we want to do is we want to get shadows from that same point where that directional light is, but we want to use a spotlight to achieve it. And the reason we're doing this is because spotlights obviously don't cast light from an infinite point. They cast light from the beginning of that spotlight. So it allows you to have it inside of a piece of geometry, like the sky dome. So all we'll do is we'll duplicate that light. And as soon as I do that, you can see, obviously it got twice as bright. So this is a problem that we're going to want to deal with in just a bit. So let's go ahead and just um, make that intensity. Well, we'll leave it up kind of high around two so you can really see it. But we'll get rid of the color in there. And we're going to switch this from being a directional light to just simply being a spotlight. So as soon as I do that, now you can see that we're back to that standard lighting model that we had on this sort of back end of the landing pad here. But wherever that spotlight is hitting, the cone of that spotlight is hitting, we obviously have this double illumination. So that's a problem that we're going to have to address. Let's go ahead and turn on those depth map shadows. And you can see that we get those really nice, high quality filtered depth map shadows from that spotlight. And the thing that's kind of nice about spotlights is they also allow you to really fine tune where that resolution of that depth map shadow is going to get used. It's not trying to cast that depth map shadow map across all the geometry. It really is just focused down to where that cone is for that spotlight. So the next thing that we want to do, and this is really where the trick comes in to get this to not add that extra bit of illumination is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this spotlight one more time. So we'll just control D that guy. So we have this new spotlight shape here. I can turn off the shadow maps for that guy. We don't really need those shadows in there. And all I have to do is inverse the intensity. So if we put that to minus two, essentially now what I have is spotlights in the exact same position as that directional light. And all they're really doing is adding the shadow effect that we get. And that's how I went ahead and got those really nice high quality depth map shadows inside of a sky dome. And this is a great way of really focusing where your shadows are going to be. And it also gives you the ability to light your scene and then have lights that only add shadow or only darken certain areas up by using this sort of double spotlight with one of them having the intensity values um, thrown to on the minus side. And the last thing that I would do is I would take all these guys and just parent them into the hierarchy of that directional light. So then if I wanted to take the directional light and begin sort of aiming it around or changing the light into my scene, obviously it's going, to, um, it's going to take into account those spotlights that are casting that shadow at the same time. So it's just a couple of little tricks, but they really do allow you to gain a good bit of control exactly where your shadows are going to go, how they're going to be handled, and separate them out from the overall lighting intensity that you had from that directional light. So hopefully that's a useful tip for you guys, and um, I'll be posting a couple more web movies very soon.